sesión de nuestra secuencia de charlas, eh, tecnologías, eh, 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 tecnologías para una minería eficiente y segura bajo tierra. Eh, ese año nos hemos puesto el tema de la minería subterránea eh, como un tema central en una secuencia de, de charlas eh, online. Eh, en la primera charla hemos escuchado desde el punto de vista de la investigación de la eh, RBTA Uh, Aachen, de una de las más prestigiosas universidades de ingeniería en Alemania. El día de ayer escuchamos sobre todo el tema de, de aire y, y um, equipos de protección uh, de respiración. Y hoy día nos toca un tema que está también uh, casi un sinónimo de la minería subterránea, que es todo lo que se necesita para, um, uh, para crear y para, para operar tanto los pozos como los túneles en la minería subterránea. Es un gusto tener con, con nosotros uh, acá como primer expositor Oliver Vilke de la empresa PAUS um, y nos va a comentar sobre los avances tecnológicos para un trabajo que es, es um, muy importante y que uh, siempre tenía cierto, ciertos riesgos que es el Scaling, como creo que se usa el término en inglés también acá. Ya, yeah, por favor, um, Oliver Wilke, um, eh, este stage is yours. Um, él va a hablar en inglés, así que los que necesitan traducción simultánea lo pueden escoger el canal de traducción en el botón que se, se, que se ve como un globo. Para no sobrecargar internet, eh, solicito que eh, los que no hablan en ese momento pueden apagar su video y su micrófono. Um, para um, eh, tener la mejor transmisión posible. Muchas gracias. Y Oliver Wilke, por favor, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I have, can you see my presentation now? N not yet, but I can see you. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. Um, the, the, The green button shares yeah, screen. I shared it, and usually it should show now. Sometimes it, it exactly. Now it, it, uh, um, we will see it. Now we oh. can see your presentation. Sometimes there's a certain delay, as you are now in Germany. Um, so. Um, yeah, perfect. Just, well, there so is no problem. The stage is yours. Thank you. Glück auf to everybody. Uh, with this traditional German mining greeting, I would like to welcome you to my presentation. My name is Oliver Wilkie and I'm a mining engineer and working since 2011 in the company Paus as sales manager for Latin America. Uh, I'm glad uh, to have the opportunity to present you today uh, technologies for better, safer and more sensitive scaling uh, in underground mining. First, I will give you uh, some ideas about the company Paus and our representative in Peru, Ferreros. Uh, then I will give you an idea about scaling, especially about the risk for manual scaling. And at the end of the show, uh, I will give you some uh, machine solutions and new possibilities to make this job easier and much more safer. Beep. Uh, the company Paus is a family-owned company and is operated uh, by the second generation of the family Paus. Uh, we can offer you 50 years uh, experience in machinery uh, design and production, quality made in Germany, and uh, we are specialists since 1974 in uh, mining, especially in underground mining. We can give you solutions which will fit to your demands the feeling of understanding and with every aspect in good hands. Um, Paus does not only convince versus uh, vision and corporate uh, principles. Our uh, vision is uh, we want to inspire as a preferred innovative partner with individual solutions for the transport and safety of people and materials. And this will be done by transparency, excellent appreciation, uh, proximity to our customers. So we think also about the future. Uh, our partner in Peru is the company Ferrero since 2011. Um, we have the knowledge about the Peruvian mining sector and uh, the mining conditions. Uh, we can give you as an advantage uh, stock machines, uh, which are located in Peru. 
high spare part stocks also in Peru and excellent service. Additionally, our service from Germany is top because we have motivated and excellent trained uh, service personnel, mining experts, online spare parts catalog with worldwide access, high spare parts availability and uh, training on mine sites. Coming noon, uh, I'm coming now to, to the scaling. Uh, as you know, scaling belongs to the production uh, circle and is uh, defined as a removal of loose rock from the roofs and walls uh, of a mine by manual or mechanized uh, means may be necessary during any stage of mining. Usually scaling will be done after the blasting. In this way, it is guaranteed that no miner is exposed to an unsafe environment during uh, subsequent work or that equipment are damaged by rock falls. Manual scaling is very labor intensive and mechanical methods can be too powerful and actually produce a less stable roof. For scaling, as you know, it's one of the most dangerous jobs in the entire mining process. You need really skilled and experienced people. So scaling requires experience in use with tools and machines, um, knowledge about uh, geology and rock mechanics, uh, requires instinctive feelings for working with heavy duty machines, uh, systematic approach and constant securing of galleries, requires excellent illumination, otherwise you cannot see anything in high galleries, requires sensitive energy input, otherwise you can destroy the roof of the gallery. In South America, a lot of uh, scaling uh, was done with scaling bars. Um, this job is a really, really hard and uh, unliteral physical ex uh, exercise. Miners work directly in the hazard area and it's a high risk of accident uh, due to um, bad illumination, misjudgment of situation or other um, possibilities. Less efficient and slow in operation speed, galleries with high altitudes requires platform to reach scaling area. So it's really, really difficult. Um, so, as a conclusion, manual scaling is necessary, but it's unsafe, unproductive, uneconomically, and uh, forces a lot of injuries and missing working days. Um, this is proven by a systematic review of recent uh, Emscher accident and uh, fertility reports for underground metal mines. Uh, revealed that uh, nearly a quarter of all f uh, fatalities were related to rock falls in mining. Approximately one third of all accidents involved scaling and about half of all scaling related accidents involved miners with less than three years. So you see scaling is uh, a job for really, really um, experienced guys. Otherwise uh, you have fatalities. A uh, short view to um, scaling accidents in Peru between 2000 and 2007, there were 433 fatal accidents with uh, roughly 500 victims. Uh, caused by rock falls in underground was the uh, majority cases. Uh, in 2019, um, there were only 37 fatal mining accidents in Peru, but it caused again 40 deaths. Um, the same year, another 1,200 accidents left people badly injured uh, and another 3,300 people um, were reported as uh, light accidents. Uh, if you compare these figures, for instance, to a figure from, from the US, uh, they had in 2018 only 27 fatal accidents, uh, 18 were related to uh, surface operated mines and only nine in underground. So you see there's a big gap. To, um, here you see um, that PAUS uh, has experience in scaling machines since uh, 2001. The first scaler we have uh, sold in South America was uh, sold to uh, Codelco in Chile. Um, the reason why Codelco bought this machine was because of the small envelope size, high maneuver, uh, maneuverability, and great scaling range of the machine, up to eight meters. 
Uh, since that, we have developed the machine more and more, and we have sold in these uh, last 19 years, actually, more than 250 units worldwide. 70% um, of these units are operated in Latin America. Uh, the reasons why um, we have sold these machines, you can see it here in the highlights. Um, we have uh, safety high safety standards for scaling in underground, compact machine, robust chassis with articulation and hydrostatic uh, all-wheel drive. Um, with this machine, you can sensitive and selective uh, scaling and remote controlled, and it is low investment cost for this machine if you compare it to other um, uh, uh, competitors. The reason why you can work uh, sensitive with this machine is uh, the extreme maneuverable, maneuverable um, due to articulation and the swiveling boom. So you can go directly to the uh, point where you want to uh, put the energy into the roof. Uh, the machine is equipped with a separate hydraulic uh, circuit for the hammer uh, so that you have always the possibility to use a drivetrain. Robust telescopic boom. Um, in total, this machine minimizes operation costs and maximizes operation time. Um, there are two different kind of uh, possibilities. The 853 with a working height of 8 meters. We have the 1253 uh, with a working height of 10 meters. Uh, you can have it as a diesel, as a battery driven, or as a diesel electric machine. Um, because of all the experience, I said um, we have now um, the scaler uh, in our program since 19 years. Uh, we have taken these kind of experiences um, to design a new uh, scaler called P scale. Um, the highlights for this machine are that we have uh, now 50% more power with a 96 kilowatt uh, engine from Caterpillar. We have a 55% more cooling surface. Uh, we, oops. we have also uh, integrated a pause diagnostic display um, to, that the operator has a possibility to check out uh, failures and um, to see the uh, conditions of the machine. Uh, with pause connect, we can also uh, help the operator to analyze uh, the uh, performance of the machine. Uh, for better comfort, uh, the uh, cabin is now 20% tiltable and there are new functions um, to be more sensitive in scaling. For instance, uh, you can adjust now the uh, hammer frequency to uh, minimize the energy which is needed for the scaling. The machine is um, equipped with the uh, Caterpillar uh, electric engine and via a uh, uh, connection uh, of a CAN bus system to the center vehicle control, uh, which is placed in the cabin, we can connect the Pulse Connect gateway, diagnostic and driver display, and also the te um, tele remote or remote receiver. Um, this system helps you to decide between three remote systems, uh, which makes the scaling uh, process much more safer. One solution is uh, to take the plug and play radio remote control. Uh, this radio remote control um, is integrated with a responder and a receiver in the machine. All scalers are equipped and prepared for this kind of solution so the customer can, after he has bought the machine and he um, decided to, to equip the machine with a radio uh, remote control, um, he can put it on the machine and do it like plug and play, easy like that. Uh, the operator or the advantage is that the operator is not anymore directly in the hazard area. Um, the disadvantage is uh, that he has to be uh, close to the machine to have visible contact. No special network is requested. Uh, in total, it's a small investment. The second solution is be um, a hybrid tail operation. You have also a remote control and a video system. Um, on this video system, you can have uh, multiple uh, displays and individual displays uh, sizes. Uh, there is no network in infrastructure requested and the operator shouldn't be in visible contact. That's the biggest advantage. Last but not least, 
There is another uh, possibility, the teleoperation system. This is a full tele a remote operation in convenient and uh, safe area, like you can see it on the picture. Full equipped operation seat with pedals, so the operator feels like he's sitting in the machine actually. Um, he is more productive with this kind of system due to the possibility to work during shift changes. And uh, he doesn't need the time after the blast that the fumes uh, will be get out of the galleries. He can directly start to scale. Network infrastructure is needed. And uh, for this, as you can see it on the picture, um, there are um, routers and so on requested. So it's a, a higher investment. With Pulse Connect together, um, the operator has also the possibility to have uh, remote diagnostics, real-time monitoring, uh, machine releases we can um, activate, and um, you can see everything on tablets and uh, mobile devices also. Uh, other specialties uh, which we uh, will give to our customers are emergency button, for instance. Uh, in the cabin, there will be a button to press this uh, in a case of emergency. For instance, uh, um, the roof of the gallery will collapse. The operator can press the button and the machine will stop working and goes in transport mode and starts automatically to drive out of the hazard area. This is one point um, to guarantee a more safer environment for the operator on the machine. Um, the second uh, project, what we are following together with the University of Aiken and AMT is an integrated sensor-based system for the in situ uh, detection of loose rock during the scaling process. So this uh, scale sense project is, um, is done with the university to develop a sensor-based system to support the miner during the scaling process. This system will be integrated in our scalers and gives the operator the advantage that uh, he not only has to um, suit to his experiences, uh, he can use the sensor technology, will support the machine operator in detecting loose rocks and helps to find, or helps to, to um, uh, produce a map uh, and see the result of the, of the scale areas. And this, in total, gives the operator a more safer uh, environment. Here are some pictures again from the scalers. And actually, at least I want to show you this. Um, on the right-hand side, you see uh, one of our scalers, 853 in, in Chile. Uh, during the operation, the rock um, collapsed uh, the roof of the gallery collapsed in total. Uh, the machine uh, was under all these um, rocks. And the good message is that the uh, operator came out of this uh, small space in the rear window and he wasn't injured. So actually it shows how robust and how safe our equipment is and helps uh, to avoid um, fatalities in scaling process. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope it was interesting for you guys. And if you have some questions, please start to ask. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Oliver Wilke. Um, um, uh, are there questions? Hay más preguntas. Por favor, pueden usar el chat para las preguntas. Me olvidé de decirlo al principio, así que vamos a esperar un poquito, darles tiempo para, para que puedan uh, escribir uh, preguntas en el, en el chat. <coughs> um, el, eh, re, retomando el proyecto con la Universidad de, de, de Aachen, um, quizás puede ser un poco más inter, interesante un poco de uh, contar sobre el proyecto de la Universidad de Aachen y la cooperación empresa con universidad, porque eso en Perú todavía no es tan común. Quizás um, uh, Oliver Wilke nos, 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 nos puede comentar un poco de cómo es esa, 
esa cooperación entre academia y, y la empresa. Oh, uh, I do it in, in, in English for you, Oliver. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, um, I understood uh, a little bit, but not uh, incomplete. Uh, okay. Um, uh, in Peru, it's not uh, it's not yet uh, um, uh, no normal that uh, companies uh, um, uh, work together with the university. So yep. it might be interesting to to hear uh, for for our audience. Um, uh, uh, How is this working? How 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 do you do this in order to to improve technology in together with the university? Um, actually, we uh, started this kind of project with uh, the university in Aiken. Um, we went to these guys and asked them if there was a possibility to give us a, a sensor technology uh, in our scaler um, to find out what kind of of. Um, areas should be scaled in, in underground uh, galleries. Um, the university told us, yeah, actually they, they are following these kind of projects also for shearer heads at the moment. And uh, they could uh, use this kind of technology also for, for, for scaling. Um, then as, as we here heard that there was a possibility to do it. We started uh, to um, finalize a contract with the Ministry of um, um, uh, Economy in Germany, which will uh, support this kind of project. And uh, yeah, that's the way, way how it works. So we will be financed also by, by the uh, German government um, to um, be an innovative uh, uh, producer of mining solutions. Okay, um, there's another uh, question. Um, I think partly you already answered it uh, from uh, Kai Rotkiser from Bosch Rexroth. Um, how many machines do you have in Peru, operating in Peru? Uh, well, at the local service organization, I understood is Ferreiros. Um, yes, right. So in total, we... In, in Peru, we have really uh, yeah, nearly 100 machines operating. Um, we have in the market share of uh, roughly 70%. And uh, main customers over there are uh, Hotel AC, AESA, um, uh, Buenaventura. So, so we are, have a really, really big uh, customer base over there. And this is because of Ferreros also. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I must. <clears throat> I must. Preguntas. More questions. I don't see in the chat if if somebody prefers to speak. Si alguien um, prefiere um, hablar, también puede levantar la mano. Hay un... levantar la mano virtualmente. Uh, Acá tengo a Carlos Monforte um, que, que quisiera um, consultar. A ver, eh, adelante. Eh, nosotros estamos próximos a, a decidir en una compra en la empresa que trabajo. Me gustaría que nos hagan llegar la presentación. Gracias. Por supuesto, um, uh, les vamos a hacer llegar la, 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 um, uh, la, la, la presentación. Um, uh, Oliver, did, did, you, did you hear it or are you in the original channel? Uh, um, I'm in the original channel, unfortunately. Oh, okay, so. um, Mr. Monforte um, uh, just told that they uh, need to dis decide um, uh, um, uh, uh, to buy a, a, a scaler uh, and uh, he would like to have the, inf the presentation um, uh, to, to get into touch. Yeah, no problem at all. So actually, I guess you will provide this kind of presentations. Um, Is it of correct? course, but to, to be quicker, um, if you like, Oliver, you can just type your email contact um, into the chat. So um, that we will we will send the, the presentation afterwards, but um, just to to um, uh, make the time shorter. Okay, no problem at all. Um, and in the meanwhile, there is an, another question from Julio uh, Rodriguez. Um, uh, how about hate? Uh, do they work uh, uh, um, good? Do they work well at over uh, 4,600 meters above sea level? 
Um, yes, because uh, in Peru, nearly every mine site is more than uh, about uh, 4,000 meters about sea level. Um, we made our experience with that, and that is also the reason why we have installed um, on our 853 and on our new project a uh, much more uh, powerful engine. Um, this is related to, to the high altitude operations, yes. Absolutely. Okay. So they will work over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then I have uh, a question from Piero Mendoza from uh, Resemin. Um, uh, could you explain a little more detail about the loose rock detection technology? Um, this technology will be done uh, by... Yeah, and uh, it is, uh, uh, and it's uh, all close to, uh, to this one. Uh, how many uh, remote solutions for scales have you already installed? Uh, tele oh, starting first with, with the detection. So uh, the detection system will be based on acoustic and infrared, uh, um, infrared thermal uh, sensors, actually. Um, the uh, Professor Clausen has uh, shown in the first session, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, how it yes. will work. And uh, actually, um, this is how, how it will work. Uh, we are at the, at the beginning of this stage, but um, we are starting in, in short time uh, with the real testing in, 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 in Zito in uh, our uh, testing plant, actually not far away from, from our factory. And coming to the next question, I don't know actually. So our basic our basic machine is prepared for uh, uh, radio remote control. Um, the tele remote control operation uh, we haven't done until now uh, because it's a really high investment. And this project is uh, uh, we are looking at the moment for for a company. Uh, where we can install it and test it and, and, and let it operate it. But it's clear that it, it, it will work because uh, this is a technology which is proven by um, LHDs and so on. So, so this works out. So it's not, not a big deal mm -hmm. to operate the machine uh, from tail operation. Uh, I, if I, I understand it well, uh, the issue is uh, the um, communication infrastructure within the mine. Yes, absolutely. So you have to invest uh, for the routers and so on in the mine. And this means uh, uh, some money you have to put in your hands. And uh, until now, we didn't found um, a customer who wants to do it. Okay, thank you very much. I más preguntas. Um, por el momento en el chat no veo más, eh, tampoco veo una mano levantado. Obviamente, eh, Olga Vilke estará también eh, dispuesto a contestar um, eh, si le escriben a su correo electrónico, um, contestar todavía preguntas o, o uh, solicitudes. Uh, Oliver, you will be with us uh, um, till the end of this um, yes, absolutely, presentation. Yeah. If, uh, if there uh, come some more, some more questions up, no problem. Uh, Si viene una pregunta más tarde, después de la segunda ponencia, también todavía va a estar con nosotros. Así que muchas gracias, um, Oliver Vilke. Y um, vamos a la segunda parte de, nuestro, de nuestra charla online. Um, lo que, digamos, ahora hemos visto que era la parte horizontal en la minería subterránea. Ahora vamos más a la parte vertical. Uh, con nosotros uh, está Ola Schmidt y Ana Oellermann de Schachtbau Nordhausen nos van a hablar sobre tecnología para eh, eh, los, los pozos en minas subterránea. Ya, yeah, um, por favor, um, no, um, the, the stage is yours, uh, Ola Schmidt, uh, Ana Carolina Oellermann. Um, um, uh, we are very happy to have you here. Just um, share with us um, your technology and your knowledge. Thank you very much for the moment and um, glück auf to all. And uh, we have divided our uh, presentation into two parts and um, uh, as much in life, uh, ladies first, that's why I want to take over the word to Anna. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm really happy to show our technology to you all and I'm going to start. So today, um, Mr. Schmid and me, we are going to talk about um, innovative shaft hoisting systems and special underground works. So our agenda, we will give you a short introduction of our company, then we'll talk about mining hoists, hoist frames and working platforms, lateral and inclined development in different types of rocks, and at the end, subsidiaries and shareholdings. So to give you a short introduction of our company to say where we are and what we do, uh, we are based in the city of Nordhausen in Germany. We, have, uh, we are in the market for more than 120 years. And since 1992, our, all our business areas are under, happen under the umbrella of the Bauer Group. And we have currently circa 1,000 employees in different specific areas. Um, we can provide services um, for, four, for five um, different core areas. So they are mining, plant engineering, mechanical engineering, construction and steel construction. And uh, we are not just active uh, just in Germany, we are also present uh, abroad. So that's why we have a um, specific international department to work in the acquisition of new projects outside Germany. So when we focus on our mining branch, we can offer our clients an entire spectrum of mining services to create, to maintain, and to safe keep the underground cavities, such as shaft sinking, slope development, short grid and anchor works, um, a wide range of stabilization, grounding works, um, safe keeping of shafts, maintenance of shafts, old mining and planning services. So going further to the mining hoists topic. Um, so as the name says, the mining hoists, they are designed for hoisting tasks. Um, so that means they are installed in vertical or inclined uh, mine shafts and their main purpose is to provide access for people and to supply materials um, to the underground mining works. Um, and here I would like to show you some of the basic components of a small uh, mining uh, hoist. So um, in the front end of the frame, we can see um, the rope carrier with the labels coating. This labels coating uh, ensures that the rope uh, unwinds more smoothly during operation. Um, and then together we have the screw brake disc, uh, the steel rope and the safety brake. In the middle of the frame, we have the gear, the motor and the holding brake. And right next to it, we have the control station with the displays and control elements. And um, on the back of the frame, we have the input and uh, control cabinet and the cabinet for the frequency inverter. Um, but why uh, we uh, decided to uh, fabricate the mining hoist at the first place? So there were mainly two reasons. The first reason was because we needed such machines to execute our own services. So we needed a mining hoist to maintain or to safe keep the shaft. And we could of course uh, rent or buy from a competitor, but that would be too expensive. And uh, so the point was that we wanted to be independent. So we wanted to have our own machines to execute our services. And the second important point is, um, that these machines, they are um, special machines that not all companies can build. And uh, just a few companies in Germany has the know-how to build such machines. So we thought, why not build the machines that we could use in our own construction sites, but also supply to customers in, on demand. Um, and also another important point is um, that we, since we also operate the machines, we could get some feedback from the operation of the machines to optimize some parameters and further develop the, the hoists. 
So here you can see some uh, nice pictures of the mining hoist being assembled, assembled and produced in our own uh, workshop. Um, and of course, to, to guarantee safety and to avoid accidents, the, the precautionary measures are extremely important. So for that reason, um, the mining hoist must be equipped with safety related equipment. And when I'm talking about safety related equipment, I'm talking about, for example, a depth indicator and a torque monitor to detect any obstruction uh, on the, uh, of the conveyor. I'm talking about a speed, a speed monitor system, which ensures that the maximum permitted, uh, permissible speed is not exceeded by more than 20%. Um, a monitoring um, devices for rope suspension, which will detect and indicate in case the, the conveyor gets stuck somewhere. And of course, the two braking devices and an emergency stop equipment. So um, after the constant development and the continuous uh, adaptation of the hoist um, to, to the customers and to our own uh, usage in our, for our construction sites, um, we, we could develop uh, a whole range of different and innovative um, mining hoists, as you can see in this table. So we have four different types of mining hoists and they have all different parameters, as you can also see in the table. And um, for that reason, they can be used for different applications. And of course, uh, they can be adapted uh, as requests. For example, the rope length, the rope diameter, and the real diameter can also be adapted uh, when requested. Um, okay. And when we talk about um, um, mining hoist, it's also important uh, to mention the auxiliary mining hoist. They are installed in shafts exclusively exclusively to rescue people in case of emergencies so they can use they can be used together with such a rescue cage as you can see in the in the second picture uh, in the bottom um, this uh, rescue cage um, can be can accommodate four people but can also be uh, can also have higher capacity when it's requested by the the customer um, and it's important to mention if a mine has more than one shaft, it's not necessarily that all shafts has one auxiliary mining hoist. So this, this hoist can be reallocated to one shaft to another when the, the distance between the, them is not so great. And talking about that, I would like to give you some uh, background uh, in, in a practical experience that we have that we could better uh, develop our hoists. Um, so in a, a couple of, of years back, uh, we got a request from a, a client and they wanted a movable hoist um, that could be reallo easily reallocated from, from shaft one to shaft two. Um, so we, we, we developed a mobilization concept that, uh, and we came up with a final product that was a hoist that could be mounted in a trailer and then in case of emergence could be easily reallocated from, from the shaft one to shaft two. And after that, also after further development, we came up with the, the design that you can see, uh, the, this nice layout that you can see uh, in the bottom of the slide. So the semi-mobile hoist can also be used as a, a, an aux auxiliary mining hoist for, for emergencies, for rescuing people. And um, it was uh, developed also with the same purpose and got the advantage that the, the transport is faster, the re relocation of the horse is simpler, and um, the installation is also really uh, simple. So of course, all this hoist could, could be reallocated by using a crane, but this would be too time consuming. Um, okay, so 
now I would like to talk about hoist frames and working platforms. So um, in order to make a shaft working, operating, bringing people and material on the ground and back to the surface, as we already mentioned, we need the auxiliary hoist system and the main uh, mining hoist system. But in addition to that, the hoist frame and the working platforms are also important. So um, it, uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's to be used uh, in our own construction sites or um, if it's requested by a client, we can plan, we can uh, fabricate, deliver and assemble uh, hoist frames and uh, working platforms, mobile or fixed. And just to show you um, two um, practical examples of two different projects that we have done. Um, the first one uh, is related to the hoist frame. Um, we have um, replaced uh, so th this happens in, in, in Sondershausen in Germany, one of the, the shafts uh, of the client. And the client wanted to replace the old uh, shaft head frame that was more than 100 years old. And uh, we replace, we, we design, we construct, we fabricated, deliver and assemble the 38 meters and 250 tons heavy a new uh, steel head frame um, and um, the the shaft was used as a ventilation shaft and also for backfilling. So the main challenge of this project was to execute the services in a really short time. So all the conversion, so uh, the old to new was done in just 51 days without accidents and um, was, everything was done while the, the shaft was still in, in, in operation. And the second practical example that I would like to show you is uh, regarding the working platform. So um, the, the, uh, the, the project was done in, in Kassel in the Tillits uh, plant. Um, so in order to carry out some um, rehabilitation services, the client needed, so requested to construct and install a temporary working uh, platform. So um, uh, we, we, we have done that and the challenge was because um, the, the current existing um, shaft, uh, the current existing hoisting system was a rope guide system. So that means there were already 19 ropes. So it was really challenging to to install the working platform and around these 19 ropes and make the working platform movable. Uh, but the, 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 the services were complete and uh, the project was successfully uh, done. Um, so now I would like to give you the word to Mr. Schmidt. Wait a moment, please. I have some problems with the presentation. And while you're just loading the presentation, um, um, uh, pueden usar el chat también ahora para las preguntas y luego ya uh, vamos a, 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 a preguntarlas a los señores. Just mentioning that they can use a chat for their questions. Uh, so later on, we have uh, the questions already there. Um, if there's a problem also, um, uh, your colleague or one of my colleagues can share the screen. So um, uh, um, if we have uh, the, the, the backup Anna, of the... Yeah, I can do uh, Wait a moment, wait a moment. Maybe yeah. now it will it be. To work. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> it's not so easy with two sc two screens here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But now it works. Uh, everybody Perfect. can see, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We, we, we can say slide uh, chapter four. Okay, that's great. I want to tell you something about our actions or our works in lateral in inclined development and different types of rocks. 
because uh, the main uh, issue from today is uh, safety and um, also in the underground works and development works, uh, safety is a, a very big issue. And um, I want to sh give you some examples uh, first of uh, our works, what we do. Um, no, 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 it will be, okay. Uh, this is an example in uh, salt and potash mine. Uh, Anna told you about uh, a mine in uh, Sondershausen. It's uh, only 15 kilometers away from Nordhausen. And we do for them uh, many, many works uh, in uh, production works, also infrastructure works and uh, with uh, different types of uh, equipment. And uh, we are also uh, able to uh, perform in uh, other types of rock, not only in salt and uh, potash mines. This is a dolomite mine uh, in uh, Thuringia here in Germany in Karschwitz, um, we have made their uh, tunnel, uh, infrastructure tunnel. Uh, they changed uh, their production from uh, open pit to underground mining. And um, uh, the third uh, example is uh, also here near uh, our base in Nordhausen. It's in the uh, um, Harz, uh, Harz uh, Mountains. Uh, polymetal or Rammelsberg near uh, Goslar, and uh, this is a drainage tunnel for very, very old uh, mine. Uh, you must know the mining activities in Goslar are more, uh, more than uh, 1,000 years old, and um, now uh, the activities are going on there uh, again after a break of 30 or 40 years, and uh, this is a very, uh, th the fourth example, very uh, interesting example of our uh, mining works. It's the um, uh, radioactive waste deposit in Schacht Konrad near the city of Salzgitter. And this is a very good example for uh, mining under uh, sci scientific conditions, you can say, because um, it's a governmental uh, company who owns this mine and uh, it, um, the construction of this uh, radioactive waste deposit is uh, very, very scientific uh, many, many universities, many, many uh, uh, engineering consultants are uh, taking part at this project. And um, this is a very special example, you can say. But uh, what, what I want to tell you, um, uh, this project, uh, what we have in Kazakhstan since more uh, than seven years, uh, is a, a very good example for uh, maximize the safety of underground works. Uh, the rock in, uh, in this uh, mine, it's a chromite mine um, in the northwest of Kazakhstan, is uh, very special because um, it's um, uh, very, um, very, um, uh, different, very different from, from uh, face to face, from step to step. Uh, sometimes it's a very hard rock with uh, more than 120 uh, megapascal uh, and uh, very less joints and cracks. And sometimes in the next uh, five or 10 meters, it's like uh, gravel or like sand. Uh, and um, uh, it, it is a, uh, it is difficult to find the right technology or you must uh, change it very often. And our philosophy, our um, st uh, strategy of, of this development was uh, to uh, uh, bring out every person uh, out of the dangerous area. Yeah, we have, uh, we, 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 we do all works uh, from a safe uh, area. Uh, nobody must go into the unsupported un, uh, um, rock. And uh, that's why we use, uh, f especially for spray concrete, uh, manipulators with uh, um, uh, remote control and uh, also the uh, haulage loading works and uh, drilling works will be done from a safe area. This is... Uh, 
uh, an example and uh, also to uh, show a little bit uh, of our underground uh, mining actions. And um, now uh, this, this, this uh, uh, should be enough. I think it's only uh, um, to show what we can do. Uh, we are at the uh, very, very early stage of our activities in South America. And uh, that's why I want to show you only uh, what we have done in the past and in the present. Uh, and um, if you have any questions, you are invited to ask. And uh, I want to talk. Uh, I want to take the word back to Anna. Okay. Oh, oh sorry. I just share again. The... Just a second. While you're loading the presentation, can you see? hello everybody, you can use the chat for the questions. Yes, we see it already. Ah, okay, uh, good. To just make it big. Okay, now yeah. it's in presentation mode. Perfect. Please go okay. on. Okay, yeah, just the last uh, slide. So, uh, just uh, some of our other activities and uh, involvements. So we have uh, the MMG um, uh, as we have, uh, we work as engineering consultants. Um, we have um, the SPS, so Schacht und Bergbau Spezialgesellschaft. Um, it's our subsidiary for international projects. We have um, the DELSA International um, that works, uh, that uh, we own 10%. Um, works with liquid salt mining and underground waste disposal. And we have um, our subsidiary for steel works in Russia. And as um, Mr. Schmidt already talked, we are active in Kazakhstan for uh, some years uh, already. And um, we have our subsidiary Shahtbao Kazakhstan, uh, which we, we also own partially. So, um, our contact, and that was it. Uh, feel free to ask questions. So, uh, yeah. Can I can I go? Uh, can I stop to share? Um, if you like, uh, yes. Ah, okay. As you like. If you want to show the slide with the contacts, uh, you can do so, or you can. Ah, okay, can, yeah, so uh, I, will, I will leave it like this. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Anna Oehlermann and uh, Olaf Schmidt. Um, I have here the first question is, um, uh, uh, you said you had um, uh, so far not so much experience in Latin America. Um, uh, what experience do you have already in Latin America or what is your, uh, do you have already something in, in, in Peru or nearby? Um, are you looking for uh, partners here in, in, in the region, in, in, in our country? Uh, I think this is what is interesting for um, different uh, 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 people in the audience. Schachtbau Nordhausen is a company with a big history, yeah? more than 120 years. And uh, in former times, uh, we are in uh, different parts of the world. Um, but uh, South America, uh, as I remember, was not uh, uh, part of our activities. Uh, but um, since uh, five, six, seven, or you can say since 10 years, we are, uh, uh, we try to, to, um, to increase our international activities again, uh, because uh, the first 20 years after the um, uh, political change in Germany, uh, we have uh, had uh, to do uh, with ourselves and with the German market, you can say, and uh, the international activities from before, uh, it was uh, very, very hard uh, to uh, prolong it or to uh, uh, renew it. Uh, but now we try to do this and we began our acti activities uh, in the Russian and in the uh, post-Soviet market. Um, at, at the moment, we are active in uh, Kazakhstan and Mongolia. Uh, we have uh, made uh, um, some uh, things for our mother company, Bauer, in uh, Bhutan, uh, for instance, and in other uh, countries, but uh, the most of them are in Asia. Now we, now we try to make the first steps in, into the American, uh, especially the South American market. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 
Um, are there more questions? While I, uh, I'm waiting for more questions, um, and uh, just um, perhaps uh, two two questions: If there is uh, some uh, some um, uh, mining company uh, interested, if they are going for, for example, um, when it will be possible again uh, to a Bauma or or there will be in Europe, is it possible for them to see uh, one of your works? Yes, of course, uh, to, of course, to, to of course. Get an, uh, because uh, I think it's a question if you are already in Latin, in, in, uh, Latin America is, uh, very often to see, mm. can I have a reference of your work? Mm. And so mm. um, Asia is uh, quite far away for, uh, um, for us here in Peru. Um, so yes, of course. Be, uh, uh, if, if anyone is interested uh, in, in to have a more detailed look uh, into our uh, uh, projects from past or uh, what uh, are going now, then uh, I can give uh, some project informations uh, also in detail. This is not a problem. We can do it every time. And uh, we are also er very active at uh, this um, um, uh, MESA. Um, and the trade uh, fair in, in the Bauma. Yeah, trade fair, yeah. Congress, trade fairs, yeah. trade fairs, yeah. Especially the Bauma. Uh, our mother company, Bauer, with uh, their uh, machinery uh, uh, um, area and also with the construction area, are very present at the Bauma. And we uh, share uh, the stand, we share uh, the, present, uh, the, the presence. And uh, everybody, everybody is invited to come to us and speak with us, and we can uh, tell about our, our possibilities. Um, perfect. I have two more questions here. Um, uh, one is uh, from Manfred Hager from uh, uh, ILF. Does your company provide shaft construction technology with shaft sinking, raise boring, or both? And which method is more often used in Germany? Germany is uh, more often used uh, the uh, conventional shaft sinking method, uh, drill and blast. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some partners. Uh, we, uh, the um, uh, drilling, uh, um, the drilling business, you can say, uh, in our mother companies, uh, we uh, actually to uh, uh, to increase it to to develop it. And um, we have also some uh, references in uh, shaft sinking and race boring, uh, but more in uh, not so big shafts, more uh, small ventilation shafts and uh, rescue shafts and uh, such things. Production shafts, our last uh, project is a little bit uh, far away. It was in the uh, 70s, these uh, shaft sealits for uh, Kali and Salz. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have your company profile and uh, project references in Spanish language? My, uh, my uh, uh, best uh, uh, colleague, Anna, is uh, able to speak a little bit Spanish. Uh, my Spanish is not so good. I can tell you something in Russian, uh, but uh, this is not so helpful for you, I think. Um, Anna, say, about, say something about it. Uh, I, yeah. I think it, it, the question was if there's material you can share. So uh, it's easier to, to, to share with companies here. But uh, go, go on. Um, and don't yeah, just, uh, and para, para cambiar <laughs> el castellano. <laughs> No, uh, I, I, can, I can understand really good Spanish because I'm from Brazil, but speak is not my, <laughs> my <laughs> I cannot speak so good. No, unfortunately, we don't have in Spanish, but we have in English. So mm -hmm. we can uh, provide brochures, project references, um, everything as uh, someone wishes. It's no problem. But unfortunately, in Spanish, we don't have it yet. But we work, we work on this issue. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, I don't know if there are more questions uh, for Schachtbau Nordhausen or also for um, uh, Paus, for Oliver Wilke. You, the chat is open. Um, perhaps it might be interesting for you to be present at the next Peru Min. Well, we will see how, how 2021 will go, the year, the, the big um, mining trade fair here in Peru. Uh, ah. where the who is who is meeting. Um, I think everybody here in our audience knows the Peru mean, and I think almost mm -hmm. everybody will be there. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think this might be a, um, 
uh, a good idea to, to be present there, to, to have an idea of the Peruvian and regional market in, uh, in mining. Might be also uh, as a Bauer group uh, with the other companies, uh, because they also have uh, works that might, may be interesting uh, uh, for, 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 for mining. So um, there's also a, a German, uh, there's always been a German pavilion in the Peru mm -hmm. um, Okay, yeah. Okay, um, at the moment I can't see more questions. Are there any more questions? Hay más preguntas? Sea por el chat o si gustan levantar la mano, también pueden levantar la mano virtualmente. Hay un botoncito para levantar la mano. Bueno, no, a ver, se ha movido. No, por el momento. No veo más preguntas, entonces parece que ha sido todo muy claro. Ya, yeah, um, so, uh, entonces si no hay más preguntas, solo me queda agradecer a todos los presentes. Muchas gracias por estar acá con nosotros. Eso ha sido la tercera charla um, de cinco charlas uh, sobre... De, um, Minería subterránea. Mañana nos toca la charla eh, que trata de aguas y eh, backfill, tecnologías para backfill en minas subterráneas. Y el miércoles 23, la última sesión que es soluciones inteligentes eh, eh, para minería subterránea, digital, digitalización, automatización, eh, donde nos van a hablar eh, sobre sen sensores, digitalización y robótica en la minería subterránea. Perfecto. No veo más uh, preguntas. Entonces, muchas gracias también a los expositores. Thank you very much Muchísimas to gracias. our speakers. Um, uh, we are always here in, in, in place uh, for you. Uh, we will send uh, the presentations uh, to the audience so they can contact you and come yeah. back uh, on you. And um, if, if you have any question, you also can contact us if you like. Thank you very much for being Thank with us. Thank you very much. Thank Muchas you gracias very much. a todos por estar uh, con nosotros. Van a recibir uh, uh, las presentaciones uh, de todas esas charlas. Uh, pueden accederlas luego en nuestra página web. Si quieren contactar a las empresas, por favor, adelante. También estamos siempre a su disposición. Muchas gracias, que tengan un excelente día y ojalá nos vemos mañana y en la otra charla el 23. Manténganse sanos, eso es lo más importante en esos días complicados. Y Glück auf, que es el saludo alemán de los mineros. <risa> Glück auf. <risa> Muchísimas gracias, hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.